Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today we're going to be teaching you how to make a spigot server in Minecraft 1.16.2. It has been a while since we've updated the story. As you can see, 1.15.1 was the last time, but today we are here updating it for 1.16.2. We're going to be going over every single step of getting a spigot server from, you know, getting the server set up, getting the spigot server files, to actually getting in game and, you know, playing on the spigot server and showing you how your friends can join the spigot server and all that. It's going to be covered in this video, but first I do want to mention this is not a 24-hour spigot server. It's only going to be up and running when you your computers up and running and it's also only meant for your friends your family people that you can trust and that's because it's hosted on your own IP address and if someone gets your IP address they can actually do things like hit you offline via a DDoS attack as well as figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates you actually see that later in the video how much information you can get from your IP address so it's pretty crazy stuff and that's why this is not meant for anybody and everybody it's just meant for people you trust that you would be okay with coming over to your house it is also hosted on your own computer which means you need a decent computer right you're gonna need an okay sort of more modern updated computer to be able to run a server and play Minecraft at the same time. Now, if you are struggling to play Minecraft as is, or if you can just play Minecraft at like medium to settings and stuff like that, you're probably not gonna be able to run a server while playing Minecraft. But don't worry about that if it's the case, because we do have a solution for you, and that solution is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex, to get an incredible Minecraft server that, guess what, isn't hosted on your own computer. Yeah, that's right, it's not hosted on your own computer, and that means it's hosted on Apex's hardware, and you don't have to worry about it. All you do is get an IP and join. It's also a server that you can keep private for just your friends and family if you want, but you can also make public if you want and have anybody and everybody join. If you want a public server, thousands of people join it, you need to do it with someone like Apex because guess what? They're set up for that. They're DDoS protected, so you don't have to worry about that and all sorts of other amazing things that Apex offers, including 24 seven support. And you can see this video, it's like 20 minutes long almost. Guess what? At Apex, you don't have to worry about this long setup process because over there, you just get your server, get it set up, and then you're good to go. You just get an IP. I'm getting it set up by the way so they're just selecting spigot 1.16.2 that's it it's that easy and you've got a spigot server boom we actually love apex so much that we host our own server played our breakdowncraft.com on them so check out apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash apex get an incredible server for you and your friends thanks to them for sponsoring this video but nevertheless what if you want a spigot server on your own local computer well if that's the case let's go ahead and jump on into it the first thing you need to do is go to the second link down below that's going to take you here this is how to make a spigot server it's our text tutorial for making a spigot server we create these because they're helpful and a lot of people like to go through stuff at their own pace and that's what these allow however if you're going through this video just come here and click on this yellow download spigot button that's then going to take you off to a spigot's website here kind of the get bucket download site for spigot specifically but once you're here come down here next to the 1.16.2 version scroll over and click on the yellow download button that'll go ahead and take us off to here where we can go ahead and click on the spigot 1.16.2 jar link here once you click on that, it will download Spigot 1.16.2 in the bottom left. We want to go ahead and click the Keep button here to, well, keep the file and make sure it's on our computer. If you're on Mozilla Firefox, you'll need to save it in the center of your screen. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and minimize our browser. And here on the desktop, we do have Spigot. Right there it is. We also got this unconfirmed file. You won't have that. But this is on your desktop. No worries. It's going to be found in your Downloads folder. To find that, click the little Windows icon. It's in the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, most likely. Click on that little Windows icon in the top or bottom left of your screen. And then go ahead and type in Download. Loads. They have this downloads file folder in Windows. Click on that, and in here you will find Spigot. Go ahead and drag Spigot to your desktop just for ease of use. Now, once this is on your desktop, right, you're going to have this Spigot 1.16.2. We want to go ahead and rename this to just Spigot. Now, in some cases, it'll be Spigot 1.16.2.jar, but you may just have a file called Spigot. If it doesn't look like this, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to fix that later on. But what you want to do is just go ahead and right click on this, rename, and then type in Spigot. Now, it might be spigot.jar, or it might just say spigot. Either way, that's fine. If it starts with a .jar, it should always have a .jar. If it doesn't have a .jar, guess what? It's always not going to have one. It's the same concept. Mine does, so it's spigot.jar. Yours may just be spigot, but exactly like that, all lowercase. Then we want to go ahead and create a new folder on our desktop. So we're going to go ahead and right-click, create a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you want. I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why well, am I naming it that? Because that is our own incredible Minecraft server. We've got Greed Protected Survival with Medieval Survival having 30,000 quests and a play race economy and Aquatic Survival having an awesome slash shop economy. We've got Custom Factions, Custom Skyblock. I won't take up too much time here to promo it. It's amazing. So come play this. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. But nevertheless, once you've got this folder set up, you name it whatever you want there. You can take the spigot.jar file and drag it in into this folder you've created. Now we can go ahead and open up this folder. And once we're in here, we have the spigot.jar. That's kind of all we should really have in here. And now we need to open it. 
To do that, you want to right click and create a new text document. So right click, new text document. Then you want to open up this text document and in here, you want to go to the description and find these. These are different amounts of RAM that you want your server to have. Two gigabytes, three gigabytes, four gigabytes, or you can change these numbers here, 4,096 being four gigabytes. So if you wanted to change this to five gigabytes, you would change it to 5,000 like something, 100 something megabytes. I don't know off the top of my head. And there you go. You would change that first number and that second number, but most people will be okay with four gigabytes on their server. So let's go ahead and copy that there. You can choose however much RAM you want. Most of the time, start with less RAM and then upgrade over time as you go along. Once you've copied whatever code you want from the description, you can go ahead and minimize the browser or whatever. And we have Java here. We want to make sure that it starts with Java and it ends with pause and there's no spaces or anything above that. So it should start with Java, end with pause. It looks similar to this, except these numbers right here may be different. Then we want to click on file, save as. It's going to open up this right here. And then in this folder, this play.breakdowncraft.com folder, in my case, you might have it spigot 1.16.2 server, whatever it is. You want to name this file run.bat. Then you want to change the save type as to all files. So file name is run.bat, save type as is all files, and then click save. Now we can close out a notepad over here, and we have this run.bat file. Now at this point, if you double click on this and it fails, but it does say it failed because of the UL, you'll see what I mean here in a second, that means it worked, right? So basically after 20 seconds, it'll start generating files in here. And once it does, you'll know it works, right? You'll have an eula.txt file specifically and you'll know it worked. However, if you open this up and it gave you some kind of weird error or some kind of different error, first things first, lower your RAM. If you can start the server with one gigabyte, that means you need 64-bit Java. We're gonna show you how to get that here in a second. However, if you can't start the server for whatever reason, it says Java's not available, something like that, then guess what? You need to get Java. So we have here how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers, Spigot being a Minecraft server. Guess what? This is going to help you out. It's helped over 1.4 million people get the correct version of Java. So come here, go through this simple three-step tutorial, and then you should be good. But if for whatever reason you still cannot open the run.bat file and thus run your server, you need to run the jar fix. So as you can see, this is basically going to take all the .jar files on your computer and link them to Java once again so that server.jar that we're opening here using the run.bat file is going to be able to work after running the jar fix and installing Java. If you need to start by installing Java, then run the jar fix if it still isn't working. But nevertheless, as you can see here, it does say you need to read the ULA. That's what you should see. Press any key to continue. Go ahead and do that, and then we'll close out of the CMD. However, we know this ULA.txt file now, so let's go ahead and double click on that. And then we want to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that, as long as we agree to the Minecraft EULA linked here. If we do, we can go ahead and click File, Save, after changing EULA equals true there. Make sure it says that. File, Save, and now if we double click on the run.bat file, guess what? Your server's going to start running up. Right now, at this point, you could join your server. I'm actually going to show you how to do that, and the reason for that is because this is how you'll pretty much always join your server. While you may be able to join off your public IP, some people can't join their own servers off their public IP. That's okay, as long as your friends can, but you can always join off of your local IP address. Now, this, if you're starting this server for testing or something like that, then guess what? You're done after this part. After we join the server here, you can use this as a test server. You don't need to open it up to your friends or anything like that guess what? You're done. It's, it's that simple. But nevertheless, as you can see here, we are generating all these files. It is then going to generate all the spawn stuff and everything like that. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and open up the command prompt. To do that, click the uh, Windows icon. So again, the top left for me, bottom left of your screen, click on that little Windows icon, and then type in CMD. We then have command prompt here. Open that up. And in command prompt, what you want to type is IPCONFIG. IP config, all one word, exactly like that, and hit enter. You're going to get a bunch of information here. What we need is two strings of numbers. So I'm going to open up Notepad. And in Notepad, I'm going to write down two strings of numbers. The first is our IPv4 address. So our IPv4 here is 192.168.1. If I can type 168.1.1. So again, 192.168.1.123. There we go. So as you can see, IPv4 address 192.168.1.123. IPv4 address 192.168.1.123. Awesome. <laughs> now, we need the second number, which is the default gateway. So we got our IPv4 address. We need our default gateway. So our default gateway here is 192.168.1.1. However, if you have two default gateways, one that has numbers and letters, like this one right up here, and one that's just numbers, might be under it or something like that, if you have to, get the one that's just numbers. It should be something simple, a four string of numbers like this, like 192.168.1.1. Yours may be different numbers, that's why we're getting it this way, but nevertheless, whatever it is, copy it over here into Notepad. Now we wanna go ahead, our server is starting up. As you can see, it says done there, that means it started. We can go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.16.2. We're just gonna open up 
vanilla Minecraft 1.16.2, and then we'll join on in using this IPv4 address. So if you want to go ahead and copy that IPv4, then we'll go ahead and open up Minecraft, and we'll see you once this is open and we can join the server. So here we are in the Minecraft main menu. From here, we want to click on multiplayer. Then we want to direct connect to our IPv4 address. So we paste in our IPv4 address there, click join, and then over here on the left-hand side, you'll see, boom, there we are joining in right like so. So here we are, we're in the server, it is working, it's loading terrain right now, but after it's loading terrain, it will work, right? There we go, boom. But nevertheless, we are now in the server, it is working, it is up and running, but your friends cannot join it. Only you can join via your local IPv4 address that we just used. Only you. No one else can join via that address. Unless they're on your same Wi-Fi, they may be able to. They're not necessarily guaranteed to. Some computers are weird with how that works, but nevertheless, they might be able to, but you will always be able to join off of your local IP address. If you can't, make sure you've typed it correctly, because uh, that's really the only reason that that might be the case. However, what if you do want your friends to join? What if you, you know you want your friend from across town to join your server here? Well, if that's the case, we need to port forward, right? So you can use this as a test server. You can do everything you want. For example, if we op ourselves over here, just type OP and then whatever our username is in the console there, OP space username. We can do things like, you know, game mode creative. All that stuff can be done on the server. We can check for plugins. There isn't any plugins right now, but nevertheless, you can check for them. All that stuff. This is a spigot server. I think version is the thing. There you go. We're running spigot. We're at like so. So awesome stuff. That is working. That is good to go. However, however, what if we want our friends to be able to join this server. Well, if that's the case, we need to port forward. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect there. Then we're going to stop our server over here, SDOP, type stop over here. Always stop your server by typing stop in this window and then hitting enter. Then you're gonna see it save the world, save everything, and then it's going to close out of itself here. Well, it's gonna close out after you press any key. There we go, and now we can port forward. So the first step of this is actually coming over to your server folder where you have your spigot.jar and all that and finding the server.properties file here. So we wanna find the server.properties file double click on that and then in here you want to find server dash IP equals All right so if we scroll down we're gonna find server dash IP equals there we want to copy that IPv4 address right that we used to join the game we want to copy that IPv4 address and paste it here next to server dash IP equals it should all be one string server dash IP equals and then the string of numbers no spaces or anything like that and then go ahead and do file save it's gonna save your server dot properties file and now we can go ahead and start the next step of port 40 which is actually going to be opening up your browser and opening up a brand spanking new tab then in this new tab we want to go ahead and copy the default gateway right so we're going to copy the default gateway there paste it into google right like so paste it into your web address right right up there at the top whatever your default gateway is and then hit enter then it's going to open up something that looks similar or most likely completely different from what you see here right it's going to be something most likely completely different from what you're looking at right here on your screen but one thing that probably will be the same is you'll have some kind of login box now what do you enter into this login box whether it pops in from the top it's in the center of your screen it's in the left hand side whether what, what do you put in this login box well you want to put in your router's username and password. Now, this is different from your Wi-Fi password, and we have a tutorial in the description down below on how to find your router's password. So if you come here, it's going to walk you through all these different methods to find your router's password, and then once you find it, most people find it by method three, by the way, but once you find it by method three, most likely, you can then come back over here into your router, enter in the username and password, right like so, and log right on in to your user or to your router without any issues. You're gonna log right into your router without any issues. And then once you're here, it's time to port forward. Now port forwarding is different on every single router. Sometimes that overwhelms people, but don't worry, we've helped millions of people port forward. And we do have this in-depth tutorial here, which is actually a complete guide to port forwarding on any router. It goes over Netgear, Linksys, Asus, all of these popular routers out there today, Verizon, AT&T, TP-Link, all the popular routers out there today are covered in this video here. It is in-depth, it is great, and it will help you port forward. Even if your router isn't mentioned on this port forward guide, by the way, watch through it because most routers have similar backends, right? And you're gonna pick up the terms and pick up the different locations that things could be in in your router. But nonetheless, once you've been through this tutorial, you can come back over to your router and it's time to port forward. Now for me, it is in security. For you, it may be in advanced, it may be in advanced advanced, it may be in apps and gaming, it may be in NAT gaming, in AT gaming, it might be in NAT triggering or NAT forward. Forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in port forwarding right away. It could be in an admin tab. A lot of times I think on Netgear it's in advanced and then it's an admin or it's an admin and then it's an advanced. I don't know. But nevertheless, what you're looking for is port forwarding. So for me, it's in security and then it's in apps and gaming. Like I said, it could be there. And then for me, it's in single port forwarding, right? So you got to go through quite a few menus to get to it on my router there. But at the end of the day, we found port forwarding. Once we found port forwarding, we want to add a new single port forward, right? Now you may have like a big list like this. If you do, just go ahead and enter in the first one. That's fine. Now for application name or ID on our port forward, you want to put Minecraft. 
for external port. If it has the word port at all, you want to put in 25565. So external port, hey, the word port's there, so we're going to put in 25565. For internal port, guess what? The word port's there, so we're going to do 25565, right like so. For our protocol, we want to do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Whichever you have, you want to make sure both are selected no matter what you do. If you can't select both, do the pull forward twice, once for TCP and once for UDP. Now for device IP, I have device IP. You may just have a list of all the devices that are on your computer. Either way, you want to enter in either your IPv4 address that we found earlier. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.123. Or you want to select the computer that you're starting the server on. Either way, that's what you want to do in order to make sure things, you know, run properly and get your port forward correctly done. Then you want to go ahead and click save here. Boom, your port forward is done. Unless you need an external IP. By the way, device IP could also be known as internal IP. But if you need an external IP for your port forward, that's perfectly fine because everyone who's watching this video and wants their friends to join their server needs their external IP. To find that, you want to go to the description down below. And this is our website where we give you your public IP address, right? So as you can see, your region, city, latitude, and longitude are all findable via your public IP address. That's why it's important that you keep that safe. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and copy our public IP here. Then we're going to come back over into our router. If we need to paste this over here, we can. Most likely you won't, but if you do, you can paste it in there. Then go ahead and click apply, click OK. And now we can minimize our browser, come back over into our server, start the server, right? That's step one. Then we want to go ahead and start up Minecraft, right like so. And I will meet you all once the server is started up and we can join it. There we go. The server is now started up. We can go ahead and click direct connect. By the way, you can add this server. That's not a problem, but we're going to go ahead and click direct connect here. And then we want to paste in our public IP address. So that's the public IP address we found via the link in the description down below. And now when we click join server, it's going to log us right on in, right like so. As you can see over here on the left hand side, it says Nick King without any issues. Awesome. Boom. It is now working. However, if you can't join via your public IP, that is fine, as long as your friends can join via your public IP. But what if they can't? Well, if your friends can't join via your public IP, there's most likely an issue with Windows Defender on your computer or an antivirus. Your port forward could also be wrong, so check there as well. Make sure everything is correct and the same as mine was in the port forward. However, if your port forward is correct, then most likely it's a firewall either on your router or on your computer, like Windows Defender, blocking the connection. But again, that's only if your friends can't join via your public IP. You don't need to join via your public IP. Some ISPs, right, internet service providers, don't work that way. They don't allow you to join back to your own computer via your public IP address. Some do, some don't. Mine does, so we're fine here. But in some cases, that is the case, and you will need to join via your local IP, and then all your friends can join via your public IP without any problems. But again, most likely, though, it is a firewall like Windows Defender or an antivirus, and you can find Windows Defender linked in the description down below our tutorial on how to enable Windows Defender for Minecraft servers in the description down below. But thank you also so much for watching. Enjoy your new Spigot server, and I bet you're wanting to know how you can add plugins to this server. Well, we have an in-depth video on how to add plugins to a Minecraft server, whether it's Spigot, Bucket, or Paper, in the description down below. It's all done the same way. It's also on your screen right now in the end card and linked in the eye at the top of your screen at some point in this video. That video did pop up for you, and you can click on that eye up there and find it to get to the tutorial on adding plugins to your server. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Come play with us on the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, play.breakdowncraft.com. I can't wait to see you online. My name is Nick, and I am out. Peace.